Greetings everyone, Dennis Chang here in Osaka. By the time you watch this, I don't know where I'll be, but I'm not in Japan, I think. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, I really don't like traveling. I wish I could just stay in one place and just do my thing. But my life is ironic that way. Anyway, today I want to talk about technique. And for those of you who don't know, I do have a book on Amazon. Uh, I think it's called Gypsy Jazz Picking Secrets. Just look it up on Amazon or look in the description box. Uh, or in the pin comments, I'll put up a link. We're really, I think, to date, it's the most accurate book that describes the technique used by Django Reinhardt and uh, the gypsy musicians who play in that style. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I've worked with all the best gypsy jazz players on the planet, the living ones. Bire Lagren, Angela Dabar, Chavlo Schmidt, Dorado Schmidt, Samson Schmidt, Amati Schmidt, uh, you name them, I've worked with them. Uh, all the legends. And so today I want to talk about an aspect of the technique that I think is important. I have made videos about this previously. I think last summer you can check from about a year ago. And well, it's the fact that when people think about technique, they often think about playing fast, about dexterity. That's just one aspect of it. And I think what's very important, and as I described in the book, it's not about being dogmatic, but it's about being musical. And I think technique should serve the music whatever technique you use. Each technique has its pros and cons. So there is, in my opinion, there is no universal technique that allows you to do everything. I used to, when I was younger, I used to believe, I, I used to try to find a technique that would allow me to do everything until, you know, eventually I realized there is no such thing. You use each technique, you treat it as a tool to get the desired color. So what I did for you here, I recorded one chorus of a very obscure Django Reinhardt solo, Minor Swing, from 1950. It's a very, very beautiful solo. And so to work on this aspect of technique, I would suggest that you cut out the improvisation part, which is why I took a Django solo. Here, I just want to focus on sound, on making on sound and delivery, making it as beautiful as possible. And since I'm playing a Django solo, I'm not necessarily trying to sound exactly like Django, although I'm trying to just play in the spirit of Django or in that style without necessarily being a 100% copycat, if you know what I mean. So actually tomorrow I'm going to have to leave Osaka, so I'm recording a whole bunch of videos. I, re I didn't have much time to learn this first chorus. I would have done the whole solo, but I only had like really 15 minutes to learn the solo and then to record this. Um, if I had more time, I would have even done a better job at uh, making a better sounding solo. But I think what I did here sounded pretty good to my ears. And I'm also using the wrong pick. This is not a good pick. This is one millimeter and it's a pick that I found on the floor. <laughs> Whenever you're looking for the right pick, you can never find it. Am I right, guys? So things that I was looking out for. Good time feel that's in the style. So I'm trying to be really more or less locked in with the rhythm section. And then good tone, despite very, a very, very thin pick. I usually use two millimeters. And I tried to add a lot of the, the, the ornaments that Django was known to use. Um, I remember at one point towards the end, I didn't mean to do it, but it just came out like that because I've been Playing. I've been immersed in this style for so long. I did an ornament that Django didn't use towards the end, like a... I did... Instead of... I did... That thing. Oh well. And it, it was such a decent take that I thought, oh whatever, I'll just keep it. I didn't have much time. 15 minutes, man. After this, I have to shoot next week's video, and the week after, and the week after, because I'm going to be traveling a lot. Okay, the ornaments, the attack as well. There, at one point, there's this little thing. Um, well, let's go from the beginning. <laughs> this, as you can tell, this is unscripted. Um, it starts with this little ornament. And it's described in the book, by the way. You should get it. You should also leave a review. It makes such a huge difference. Thank you so much, guys. All right, it starts like this. Another ornament here, a little trill. Oop. Oops. Man, remember, I just learned this solo 15 minutes ago. 
So the, the, I think I did. I don't know if Django did it, but I did this. It's in the book as well. And I do a little vibrato. And then this thing here. So I'm using this picking technique where it's, ma it's all mainly downstroke based. And what I do here is I do down, down, down. I don't know if that's what Django did, but I want that down because I want this to be accented. As opposed to down, down, up. So that was up, but I want that accent. Oh, I don't necessarily want it to be that loud, but I, I do want an accent. And Django, this little thing might have been an accident, but I copied it anyway. Put a little vibrato here and this little thing. Where, well, in the original recording, Django kind of messes up the timing, so I kind of quantized it. In this, I try to make sure the timing is relatively accurate. Try not to rush it. And then he does this little, I think he does this. This little. And slide. There, that's the whole solo, and I try to put a lot of intention in this, the way I strike the notes and the way I use ornaments in the left hand. It's a combination of the two. Um, you don't necessarily have to play a note-for-note -note solo of someone else, but you can make your own solo. The reason why I cut off the improvisation part is because when we're working on, when we're practicing, it's good to isolate things, in my opinion. Because if you're trying to work on sound, while trying to improvise, you're thinking about a lot of things at the same time. So often when I practice and I want to focus on something, I focus on just that and I remove other, um, other uh, aspects of music playing that might get in the way. So in this case, improvisation. So there we go. Time feel, sound, delivery. And then what I did for you, I recorded another solo with the same quote-unquote gypsy jazz picking technique. And I have a lot of things to say about this because there are some people around the world who kind of like kind of snobs about the technique. It's like, oh, that player is not using a gypsy picking. <laughs> and I think that's really lame because some players who do use this technique uh, don't have the sound at all. And I have, I know a lot of the reasons why. A lot of it has to do with amplification. When you use amplification, it's, I gotta say, I love Japan, but players are so obsessed with amplification in Japan. It affects your technique. This technique is centuries old, maybe even over a thousand years old. And it was, it, it was developed, I guess, organically because people realized this was probably one of the best techniques to get a particular sound on a particular volume. And when you use this technique the way it was intended to be used, everything, you control the sound in your hands. When you add the element of amplification, um, it's gonna affect your technique because suddenly you can control how loud you play through uh, through technology rather than here. And then it's gonna affect how you strike the strings. And a lot of players don't really have a good sound because they, in my opinion anyway, they over rely on technology. And so I played a solo here where I removed um, a lot of the, the left hand ornaments, the slides, the vibrato, and these little, these little hiccup. And I played with a very stale, stale right hand, just like, just really just playing the notes, like a MIDI keyboard. No intention, no accents. Let's give it a, let's listen to it. Now, we're going to listen to another solo where I use, quote unquote, the wrong technique. I plant my hand here. I'm using alternate picking, maybe a little bit of sweeps here. But I'm going to try to play, make it sound as beautiful as possible. What do you think? 
do you like this better than the one before where I was using the correct technique but with no intention? Let me know what you think. And then there's another thing that a lot of... So, a lot of gypsy jazz players who have good, very good dexterity, myself included, are often victim of this. We developed such good uh, dexterity, be able, we're able to play very fast. And we're able to play so fast that we're unable to control the time feel. And then we often rush. A lot of players are very guilty of this, myself included. And I, as I said in, in a previous video, it's something that I worked hard to correct and I'm still in the process of trying to correct. It's really, really hard when you develop this really, really bad habit. And so many players in this style have this problem. So I play the same solo again and I try to rush in the way a lot of players tend to rush. Actually, it's very funny. When I was at Samoa, at Samoa this past year, the Django Festival, for those who don't know, where people from all over the world gather to worship Django and sacrifice, make human sacrifices. Well, um, I saw a jam session with a few great players. Now, Gyan, you might remember this. No need to name anyone. Everyone played well. They all played well. But one musician, they all played well, and obviously we're playing gypsy jazz, so we have like a shared vocabulary, shared uh, idioms. So they all play kind of the same way, all very well. One musician in particular stood out. He's not a famous person. And I remember messaging to Gian, he's like, wow, this guy is very, very special. Even though everyone else played well, really well, this one was exceptional. And why is that? It's because his delivery was exquisite. Um, he's from Italy. That's all I'll say. But I don't want to name it because I don't want to say like, oh, this person's better than that. No, everyone's good, really. But this one, this one guy was particularly special because his time feel, his delivery was so spot on. It, spot on. It's like uh, it made such a world of difference. So time feel is something you should think about. Um, I've made videos on how to correct time feel. I can make another one at one point. It's the bane the curse of many players such as myself and something that I worked very hard to to fix. Go back, listen to what I just played, the the poor the rushed time feel. Now go back to the the, the original performance performance that I did in the beginning. Listen to the difference. So what do you think? Big difference, huh? Leave a comment. Please check out my book. Support me. I can make more videos if you support me. Thank you so much.